Get you some money, then travel for more than the king, cause we multiply riches. Legacy building, cause I'm real efficient. Platters, you know, in East Africa, they don't know how to give appetizers. Stingy mother effers, now I'm just playing. But damn, I think it's oil. Yeah, I'm out here with the ladies right now, man. I know a lot of y'all probably wondering, like, how do I exactly, you know what I'm saying, have all these ladies around me paying for all this food and all this stuff? Yeah, I'm just smart with my money, man. I'm smart with my money. I'll order all the food. I'm the king, that's how it works, man. I don't got no time for them to be on some. Let me get a bottle of my way. Let me get a bottle of Hennessy. This is the most important part. <laughs> uh. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. So it don't say here, so I don't gotta like do it. It's just kinda like uh No no if you don't want to give it, it's okay. But I'm oh, saying okay. keep in South Africa is ten percent. Ah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm cool with giving this, man. I appreciate the service, though, but... So you said it's mean to not get a 10%. No. Ah, okay. Do you give 10% when you go to restaurants? Yeah. That's where I'm from. I believe, like, if a person chose a job, they shouldn't expect no tip. When I was working as a handyman, and I was out there in people's backyards digging deep inside of people's dirt with the cockroaches, you know what I'm saying, worms under the earth, I didn't expect a tip from people. And that was a way harder job than serving some damn food. Y'all ready to leave or y'all in y'all feelings cause I was, I ain't give a full tip. Oh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying cause you said that was mean. I'm like, damn, I ain't never heard that. I still tipped them. I just didn't give what y'all feel. Now I'm gonna be real though. If y'all wanna give y'all share, that's cool too. Y'all wanna tip them? <laughs> if y'all each give 10 Rand, we can come up with enough. So tomorrow, what I don't know they will teach me. Mm. Yes. Okay, so okay. Good. But it's not mandatory though. But mandatory if you have your services, 10% if you more than right, right, even right. me. Mm. I'm the waiter. If a boss said I never tip 10%, mm. I tip more. You tip, you be tipping more than 10? I tip more than 10%. Or, like I was telling the shorties, I was like, yeah. when, you know, I used to be in people's houses. Yeah. I used to be in the dirt. You know what I'm saying? Because I used to be a handyman, right? Yeah. But sometimes you, yeah, sometimes you have to go behind somebody's house and put in reinforcements. I was with cockroaches, worms. I never expected a tip yeah. because I'm working for whatever, you know, that's the job I chose. Yeah, but you feel me? In, so. in, in South Africa, mm -hmm. service charge when you are at the restaurant, mm -hmm. 10, if you're happy, some mm -hmm. people, they put it in 20%. Damn, sometimes I do big tips, but it's like, I, I just didn't feel like giving a big tip today. Like, I just, yeah. You know, I appreciate the service though. Y'all, when it comes to me and my money, man, number one, I don't have to explain what I do with my money, but number two, I'm gonna say like this. I believe in giving my money to things that I know will be profitable in the long term, which means the children, you know, cause they're the future of this society. Um, my projects that I work on, because that's the future of me and my legacy and to people that I truly know. See, the issue with giving tips to strangers is you don't know what they do on their off time. I'm standing on business. Let's get to the next day. Holla. Look at this nice little mall I met, y'all. That's one thing you're going to notice about South Africa. They got cool little spots out here. Lots more spots that you can try than, you know, uh, other countries. I'm going to be real, though. These other countries, see what they developed is highly impressive in certain cities that I've been to around the world, man. You know, South Africa had some time, but, you know, see the advancements of these other countries too, I can only respect it because they didn't have as much resources and they still got it done. Place, y'all, it's just like Chipotle. They stuff so fresh. They got ladybugs crawling on the, <laughs> the lettuce. That's how fresh it is, boy. Hey, Africa fresh as hell. The thing about these countries too is when you travel around, check the weather, man, it's too damn cold. They said it would be like some a difference in degrees, but today it's like three degrees. It's crazy. All these lovely people dressed for the weather and I'm out here. Today we're about to visit one of the most revolutionary guys in South Africa that once was the Honorable Mandela. I'm trying to figure out is like, is that his actual house or? 
Oh, so he, he lived in Soweto. Yeah, he used to live in Soweto. Yeah. Oh. Okay, I always thought I always thought it was a replica, like a fake copy of his house or something. I hear Soweto's the hood, so that means Mandela he grew up in the hood then. Oh, okay. That explains how he was able to tough it out and have that mental strength when he was locked up. Well, sometimes as you guys are traveling, you're going to have to also get information from other sources as well, because as the driver had mentioned to me that Mandela grew up in Soweto, I wanted to really confirm that. And I'm happy I did. He actually grew up in Eastern Cape. So this explains his mental strength, the environmental factors and the way he grew up, his family, etc. And people around him that toughened him out to make him the honorable man he is known as to be. Um, so, yeah, you know, sometimes people are just not educated and. And that's not just for Africa, that goes for any country, but back to the video. So y'all, here's that apartheid. They had their own segregation as well, similar to ours. Entrance to Mandela's home. Look. This is from the city of Los Angeles, y'all. Where I'm born and raised, man. You got a whole of war from there, too. Mm. Hey, so this is how the house first started off. Of course, they made some upgrades to it. Oh, okay. Just came back from the Nelson Mandela house tour. Listen, these black folks done sacrificed so much for us, y'all. I, you know, sometimes I be thinking about all the stress and struggle that I have to go through as a man. But then when I think about what my ancestors and, you know, what Malcolm X and, you know, the Garveyites and just so many people like I be thinking what the Panthers, I, I just kind of think and I use that as motivation. Now, we're going to talk about Mandela real quick. I don't want to chat y'all ear off because you already know a bunch of this stuff. He was the first black president of South Africa, which I find is insane because it's Africa. Anyways, but, you know, uh, they had apartheid. You know, he definitely assisted in dismantling that sickness. Um, his one of his wives, you know, which sounds familiar, you know, he, he seemed to, you know, have a few wives and stuff. But um, one of his wives, Winnie, uh, I want to say her name correctly, one of the queens. She was a very impactful woman as well. Um, and I don't think she gets talked about as much as Mandela, but she definitely is well respected around these parts in South Africa, y'all. So y'all know me being Black America coming out here, you know, just hearing and reading up on the history and learning stuff. I, I love to do that. I love to like engage myself in the culture at certain times, especially when it comes to learning about the greats. Y'all see me? I don't. I don't really hang out in the club because I'm not interested in learning about them dudes that making music. What is your legacy? A lot of these dudes have none. They're just making music and smashing chicks and smoking. That's it. Nothing to show for it. I like to pay homage. I like to, uh, you know, pay tribute to the ancestors that have come before me that's paved the way for me, y'all. The stuff that they sacrificed just so I can have the freedom to speak how I'm speaking right now. It's a beautiful thing, honestly. And that's why I'm so big on my legacy, too. But let's get back to Winnie, right? And without chatting y'all ear off, I'm just going to be real quick. Winnie had mentioned something too. They had quoted her. She said, in the quote, it said she believed in being tough or something about being rough or, or being strong on something. But I want you guys to know that when I look at this woman, Winnie, I didn't see a tough, uh, you know, ratchet ghetto chick. I saw a woman who was strong in her beliefs, who was tough in being a woman because there is power in being a woman. There is strength in being a woman. She was strong in her morals and her code and her dedication to her people. It's very beautiful to know that you have a woman that's a part of your legacy that's not just focused on your downfall. She's focused on the future. See, when you guys see I'm doing this polygamous journey, you guys are always like, oh, you just keep getting rid of chicks. Maybe I had to get rid of a shorty because she's not adding to the legacy. Yeah, she's feminine, but when it comes to nation building, when it comes to nation building, Maybe that shorty that I had with me and the other ladies, maybe it wasn't the right fit. Y'all, I am a legacy builder. I'm not looking for just feminine women. 
I'm looking for a very rare category of woman that's trying to not just better herself, but that's trying to better our kids to come and the future of the black society. Too many useless people hanging around smoking and doing God knows what and not bettering themselves or their people. Useless to society. Useless. And I want to end off on this note. The work is not done until it's truly done. Back to work, brothers and sisters. Let's get to it.